Hi everyone and welcome to another video, another short one. I'm excited as I got today this external ROM for my ZX Spectrums. Um, a device which actually holds two ROMs burned inside uh, and a um, couple of switches that you can switch uh, from one on, uh, to the other. And this um, uh, EEPROM holds two images uh, with diagnostics for the ZX Spectrum, the one uh, that comes from the uh, Retroleum uh, UK, uh, probably you already know about that, and the other one by Brendan Alford. Uh, more uh, information on uh, the link down below, um, so you can visit the page on uh, uh, Git and um, you can find more information about this device, uh, which actually is similar to the um, dead test cartridge used for Commodore 64, but I didn't have one for my ZX Spectrums, and this is quite useful if you want to detect what is going on with the Spectrums, um, or at least get uh, investigate uh, some failures. As you can see, I have a bunch of Spectrums here to start with. Uh, the first one is a working unit, so I'm going to be testing this and presenting this. The first uh, impression uh, we should be looking at to, uh, together, uh, and those three are uh, going to be uh, investigated later on. Probably uh, I could make um, another video, and not just one, um, to go into detail around this unit and how it can help us um, in uh, many ways in order to spot and identify the uh, faulty ICs and let's face it it's going to be uh, for the most part the lower RAM ICs uh, but of course you can conduct tests over the keyboard you can conduct tests over the beeper uh, you can check your ULA and CPU functionality here I got the first um, screen frozen just because it goes very fast from uh, this uh, screen to the actual test. So here is the real thing coming up. Uh, it goes straight to the uh, horizontal and vertical lines in order to check interrupts. And uh, very fast it goes through the random test and whatever tests for the lower 16K uh, of RAM, uh, which has already passed the test. And the rest of uh, the tests uh, are described in the manual. Uh, it's more than useful if you can uh, download it. Uh, the SOAK test uh, performs repeated memory testing. Actually, what it does is looping back to the start after uh, its uh, successful test. Um, you can go the, through the walk test, as you can see, which is a very simple test. Uh, actually sets uh, its bit and reset its bit in memory. Um, the inversion test, this is even more um, sufficient because many faulty chips can pass the previous test um, sequence so uh, they can escape. Then we have the march test uh, which aims to shake out simple failures uh, writing uh, and uh, addressing in uh, ascending and descending order and if you ask me the best thing and the smartest way uh, they have designed these devices uh, to have this random field test which actually is a routine which uses 16-bit pseudo random uh, number generator to fill the memory bank with values and then restarts the uh, random number generator with the starting seed and then compares the output of the random a number generator with what was there held in the memory and that is um, yeah indeed pretty impressive um, and thorough and so the random test uh, is again the final and the best way uh, you can be sure your memory uh, has passed all the tests successfully now I'm playing this uh, test again and I'm going to repeat it just because uh, I want you to just uh, take a look at the press 1, 2, 3 or 4 uh, on the screen which actually can determine if you 
uh, have a 48k or 128k or plus 2 or plus 2a or plus 3 machine that means the firmware is smart enough uh, to um, go through several uh, RAM configurations depending on your model which is more than convenient in order to uh, test all spectrum uh, models from Sinclair either from or from Amstrad um, so let's move now to the second ROM test uh, from Retrolium UK uh, which can be enabled by using this little switch as you can see in the yellow circle and the Retrolium um, diagnostics ROM if you ask me has a more <laughs> friendly interface so I'm uh, hitting the button to check my keyboard uh, it has a keyboard test embedded it has a ULA test embedded RAM uh, and uh, upper RAM lower RAM uh, and CPU uh, test as well uh, so I'm just pressing uh, keys here and there and uh, to me this is a useless test everybody knows if the keyboard was working uh, on a ZX Spectrum uh, after all these years uh, but anyways it's just something to fill in the gap uh, now going through the lower RAM tests similar to the previous test uh, random patterns random squares on the screen uh, we're gonna have the uh, lower yeah the lower RAM uh, indication that everything is fine in a while and then three stages for testing the upper RAM the 32k uh, which takes a bit longer you can see stage one two three completed and hopefully we can have a, a working um, machine uh, which is uh, absolutely tested before but anyways let's go through the rest of the things that uh, this body can do uh, so the color test the palette test if you will so pressing keys is changing borders and papers then we can see the squares uh, with eight colors uh, individually and then tries better resolution with the Retrolium logo of course and some shades around it uh, you can interrupt uh, the execution of the program by pressing any key at any point in time uh, the internal ROM test requires the smart uh, Retrolium card which actually is a ROM card with several ROM images inside and a, a, a joystick interface now we're looking at the uh, upper ROM test uh, you can quit at any point in time by hitting zero um, we have also uh, several further tests for the uh, lower RAM uh, you have this indication this warning that you're gonna be experiencing some uh, garbage on the screen uh, in several cases you will see this warning just to make sure that nobody's uh, scared <laughs> of the uh, output so you you, you have these uh, warnings uh, you'll be experiencing beeping sounds um, uh, garbage on the screen or whatever uh, during the test so don't be afraid just let it do what it does uh, because it's um, very convenient and a very sophisticated way to go through your upper and lower RAM and your hardware uh, the so-called silent 48 uh, lower um, uh, 16k and plus 32k RAM patterns on the screen again but um, it's uh, it looks uh, like a quicker somehow a quicker test uh, and of course again uh, the upper part of the ROM the 32 kilobytes in three stages so one two three successfully made it so we have a working unit and um, we're happy with the results um, far more friendly if you ask me and um, um, but the same results the same more or less uh, tests are conducted over your uh, memory um, your machines memory 
and um, your hardware so uh, in any case it's always nice to have two um, diagnostics to go through um, the test uh, over your hardware um, and make sure that they indicate the same failure point of failure or what is problematic or what is suspicious to uh, failure and whatever so it can help you a lot with your uh, repairs and so I think I'm gonna call it a wrap uh, for today a simple interface although very sophisticated very efficient uh, this switch down here below can uh, get you to the other ROM because remember this interface holds two diagnostics uh, ROM embedded and so you can have um, your machine tested at any point in time uh, nobody uh, wants to have a faulty spectrum around um, you can get diagnostics results and the first impression uh, at least what you have to uh, look at uh, and um, believe me it's going to be pretty close to the fault um, or even 100% uh, accurate so all you have to do is to swap a couple of chips or something and everything will be uh, back into place uh, thanks for watching I'll be catching you soon with another video another restoration another demo or repair and if you like this stuff the 8-bit era 8-bit uh, computing and gaming just uh, consider subscribing give us a thumbs up and yeah I'll be catching you soon bye